Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Andrew Diaz, and today I will present to you guys the St. Louis Ark. The St. Louis Ark was built in February 12, 1963, to tribute the expansion of the West. The Gateway Ark is a 630-foot monument that is located in St. Louis, Missouri. It's made from stainless steel and built in the form of a weightless ark. And who created this masterpiece, you ask? Ero Serene was a 20th century Finnish American architect and industrial designer noted for his neo-futuristic style. Serene began studies in sculpture at the Academia de la Grande Charmier in Paris, France in September 1929. He then went on to study at the Yale School of Architect, completing his studies in 1934. Serene first received critical recognition for a chair designed together with Charles Ernst for the Organic Design and Home Furnishing competition in 1940, for which they received first place for a design known as the Toilet Chain. I will let you guys have a few seconds to admire this masterpiece. Besides some of his other amazing work like the TWA terminal at JFK in New York, Dulles Airport in Washington, D.C., in the Intensa House in Los Angeles. The St. Louis Ark continues to be one of his most known work. So when the public funded idea was proposed in 1933, many people opposed it instead of suggesting more practical ideas for the funds. For cities that were still trying to get back on their feet from the depression, the idea seemed dumb and no type of purpose or value. But civil leader Luther Eli Smith replied that they needed something spiritual, like a public memorial signifying the accomplishment of the expansion of the West, remind them of their pride and hope. This project also promised jobs, which were badly needed at the time, and they helped earn the public support and got the project started. So by the 1940, the permit has been cleared and the acreage along the Mississippi River has been acquired. The National Park Service had called for a competition for a memorial that would be transcending in spiritual and aesthetic value, like a single shaft, a building, an ark, or something that would signify American culture and civilization. Of the 172 submissions, Ernst Serene, design was an anonymous selected of the judge panel. The judges noted Serene's concept was relevant, beautiful, perhaps inspiring would be the right word. It took more than a decade to clear the ARC's design past state and federal governing body, negotiation, construction, and crews, and costs. They finally broke ground for the ARC in 1959, and construction of the ARC began February 12, 1963. After years of working on this magnificent arc, bam, the arc was complete, costing approximately $13 million, located in St. Louis, embracing this structure, and a fun fact, three years after the official opening, there was already 82 businesses now beginning with arc or gateway. The arc itself is a catenary curve, the idealized representation of a free hanging chain bending under its own weight. The dip is created by tension on both ends. The arc is supported by compression from its own weight with no shears, no strains, or structure. The structure load is supported by a stretched skin design made from stainless steel plates. The structure features the most stainless steel used in any one project in history. Fun fact, the external steel sheets along weight nearly 900 tons. What does the Gateway Arc in St. Louis represent? Well, I'll be glad to let you know. The Gateway Arc, or the Gateway to the West, is a principal component of the Jefferson National Expansion Memorial, an extraordinary monument built on the west banks of the Mississippi River in St. Louis, Missouri, the oldest European city in the Midwest. Why is it called Gateway Arc? Well, it was called Gateway Art because Jefferson National Expansion Memorial was envisioned from the time it was proposed by civil leader in the 1930s as being a commemorative site that will interpret St. Louis' role in the westwards expansion of the United States. 
and it all started with one man, Thomas Jefferson, whose interest in the Western exploration started early in his life. His father, Peter, was a surveyor, map maker, and land speculator on the Virginia frontiers. Jefferson spent his childhood in the Blue Ridge Mountains on the western edge of the Virginia Piedmont. Throughout he never physically ventured beyond the Virginia Blue Ridge, Jefferson had a lifelong commitment to support Western exploration and asserting American claims to Western lands. Jefferson realized that American West was not an empty wilderness, but a land crowded by conflict nations and claim of sorority. Even before holding national office, Jefferson tried on several occasions to organize expeditions to the West. While president, Jefferson successfully acquired the Louisiana Territory from France in 1803 and sent the Lewis and Clark Expedition on a mapping and scientific exploration of the Missouri River to the Pacific. He also sent other expeditions to find the headquarters of the Red, Arkansas, and Mississippi River and to gather scientific data and information on Native Americans. In seeking to establish what he called an empire for liberty, Jefferson influenced the country's policies toward Native Americans and the extension of slavery into the West. Despite a lifelong interest in Native American culture, President Jefferson evoked policies that, that would dislocate Native Americans and their ways of life. In 1784, Jefferson opposed the extension of slavery into the Northwest Territory, but later supported the westward extension because he feared that any restriction of slavery could lead to civil war and an end to the nation. So giving you guys a little background on the expansion of the West, this leads me back to the St. Louis Arc, which to this day turned into a very known tourist attraction. Standing at 630 feet tall, you can already imagine that it has some beautiful views. Here's a few. Now we come to the best part of the video. It's artwork done by yours truly, Andrew Da Vinci. So kind of going into a concept of how the arc represents St. Louis' role or the expansion of the West, I decided to show you how this RP plays a role in my life. A secret that only people who came to see it in the gallery will know that this masterpiece was created on the envelope to signify that I'm trying to send a message. You intently notice the line in the center, which signify implied lines. The lines usually symbolize pride, symbolize strength, courage, and a lead of a pain. You also see the lion roaring and showing his teeth, and is very well known for its significant roar as a voice of a god or goddess. The lion roar can be so powerful that it stops you. It brings terror that shakes you up and draws you into something beautiful. In this scenario, shaking up the wall, reaching through, hoping you get to the other side. So going back into the teeth, the smaller teeth help the lion grip onto his prey. In this scenario, helping you grip on life. And the bigger teeth help the lion tear away flesh. In this case, which help tear away or separate you from the bed. So as you see at the bottom of the picture, you see a heartbeat. That represents life. And a heartbeat as constant rate as this one also represents good health. But as you see, the lion seems to have three tiers, and every tier has a meaning. One tier represents pain and sorrow, the other represents a tier of joy, and the last one is for the fallen that couldn't make it through that wall with you. As you see, there was a wall trying to stop the lion from getting to the other side signifying you and all the obstacles you're going to face in life. But if you become the lion, which signifies strength, courage, and leadership, no wall or obstacle is going to stop you from becoming someone better than the person you were yesterday. Thank you.